Welcome back to the PlayStation Collectors Podcast. This is season number three, episode 28. And tonight we've got Dad's Game Room, LJ on the show. What's up, man? Welcome. What's going on? Welcome to the show, man. That was the first was time I've watched that, that intro for like the whole length through. That was actually really enjoyable. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's cool. still enjoyable after the hundredth watch. As well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can imagine you're just like, oh, okay, let's let's wrap this up. No, but no, it generally is because the clips are so short, you miss a lot of the stuff. So you're watching, you're like, oh, I didn't see that. And, oh, look at that <laughs> corner. <laughs> yeah, it took forever, dude, to edit all that crap. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> I just like uh, editing is so time consuming. Like, so like when I watch other people's videos, and I can tell they put like just a re- incredible amount of time into the editing, and I'm always so impressed. I'm just like, good for you, man. I never knew how consuming editing can be until i started taking it on myself and i was like oh oh i'm in for it yeah and especially when you start to do it and you realize if you want to do it properly it's like it's not an hour work it's like Mm. 10 plus hours and yeah it's like oh wait i just discovered this feature on premiere pro and i haven't done that for the whole video should i just redo it because it makes it a little bit better and you're like (laughs) discovering techniques and I'm constantly like pulling up YouTube tutorials while I'm editing, learning how to edit. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I've done that so much because I, I have no background in it. So I'm just like, all right, how do I do this? Let's let's yeah. go on over to YouTube. And there's a steep learning curve. It's not just like you just jump on there and it's all done. Now you like you need to watch a 10 hour video on Premiere Pro to know how to use the program. Yeah, it's it's so much involved and so, like so many little shortcuts you can use and so much to know, little transitions, little techniques, just little shortcuts, everything. And if you don't know them, you're going to spend a lot of time like, how do I zoom in? How do I zoom in? Or... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's also like, you know, it's one of those programs, too, where there's like a lot of different ways you can accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. And like I usually, I usually like find the most like Neanderthalic, stupidest way to do things because I can't figure out like the correct way to do things. If that makes sense, I'm like, I'll re-upload this. Co- I'll cut this out. I'll copy this over. I'll re-download this. I'll do this. And it's like, no, you should have just hit Control F or something. It would I, I, You know what I'm saying? I like, do everything the long way, and I'm yeah. just like, you know what? That's just gonna. Ha- that's how I'm gonna do it. Exactly. No, so, you know. And then it comes the other thing where, like, I've made a lot of videos and I haven't put out one up a few for a while because I don't want to just sit there and record a video for 20 minutes. I want to sit there, record a video for 20 minutes and then edit it for three hours and then work on the thumbnail for an hour and have it all, like, to that standard. Because once you make a half-decent video, you don't want to go back and make a shitty one. You, you know, don't want to go backwards, yeah. quality or better. But I feel like it slowed my videos down because I've got that expectation on myself now. Yeah, I'm I'm still trying to figure that that whole thing out myself because I'm brand new to everything. So I'm just like 
throwing a bunch of stuff at the wall, just hoping to find a rhythm of of some sort. Thank for this show, we just hit the live button and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is We're like, my... yeah, we'll do the podcast live and that that's really so we don't have to edit it for hours. <laughs> that's kind of the direction we've gone is like, we don't do it live, but we just sit down on the other side of this desk and we just sit down, we have X and Y to talk about and then I'll just segment that out there but you know with being a dad and being a full-time having a full-time job i'm just like i need something that i can put out that's like good to watch and fun to watch but something that doesn't take 24 hours to edit and i have to put it out every single week and you're probably just filming it all in one take you make a mistake you move on yeah like we just move on and just keep going we're not trying i'm like I like to be authentic and I like to just let the conversation go where it goes. So we'll start with one topic and then we'll end up on the whole other side. No, we know how that just goes. Like, <laughs> we're just, just going to roll with it. Like if people watch it, people watch it. If people don't, people don't. It's I enjoy it. I enjoy sitting down and having conversations. So maybe someone else will. If you look at the opposite of that this week, um, I get a message from a big YouTuber in the um, the game I play, GeoGuessr, and he's one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. I was excited, and he's like, do you want to make a video together? I'm like, yeah, of course. Uh, so we sat down and made a video together, and um, he kept repeating himself and repeating himself because I know as an editor, he wants to get the perfect take. So if he didn't say something properly, he would just say it again and say it again until it was 100%. <laughs> oh. And like Ooh. being on the other side of things, it's so interesting to hear like an intro said 15 times until it was perfect. And that, that I is interesting. Respect that, but I, I'm never, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. I, I don't think I could like, I, I, I like things to be as good as I can make them within reason, but I, there are some things where I'm like, I need this to be this way or it's going to drive me insane. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you that. I, I feel like 99% of my videos I've recorded all in one take yeah we but i like to go in with a plan and different things like that and i'll write notes sometimes and... oh i have a whole yellow notepad that you see in every video that is just all of the notes and they're just scribbled and it's just it's disgusting to look at but when we so first I... started the podcast i'd start with like an a4 piece of paper but this is how i started the podcast today LJ and Joe ready for the quiz. And, that's it. <laughs> and it's yeah, been well. like that for the last 50 shows because this is, I think I looked this week, Joe. This is like show number 140 or something. It's like crazy at this point. Like, you know, it's a hundred, mm -hmm. almost 300 shows. Like, absolutely insane. I know. That's why when you're like, what should we name, name it? I'm like, dude, I, we should just stop naming them. Yeah. I'm trying I'm, to come uh, up with little titles and stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty much like, eventually it's going to be like, pee pee poo poo. Episode 180. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. I don't, care. I don't know if you noticed, LJ, but we, we just put a dad joke as the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> That's yeah. a good one. Um, we had an avatar, and then one of our dad's friends suggested, "Why don't you put a dad joke?" I mean, it makes sense too. So. That's respectable. Yeah, that's that's respectable. With. I like it. I like it. So, what you got when you guys are saying about like um, getting scripted versus not scripted and all that stuff? Like, it's funny because like I have an appreciation of like people who are like super clean and professional in their videos. Like, I'm always like, "Good for them. That's very impressive." But I honestly prefer. At this point in my life, some of the, like the smaller channels where the people are more just like authentic. Like I like people that I know, like a little rough around the edges a little bit. Like it's yeah, not I'm... So polished. I could tell it's not perfectly edited. Like I just like the real. I like real people. I'm so sick of fakeness. Yeah, artificial personalities, and I don't know. I just people don't know. Like it up. Grifters from all walks of life from from everywhere all the time the internet has brought out a thousand million snake oil salesmen from, from, from a thousand different ways and i don't know like for me like i just prefer kind of grumpy people who are just like real about things um uh, i don't know i maybe i'm just grumpy old fuck and i just like people who just <laughs> like me is really what it comes i'm out. i'm the same way yeah i i do like the the super polished and like really like the the high 
quality game collector ones like you know you've got more and you've got the pixel game squad in them but i also like just watching like the people that have like 2k views and they're talking about something but they look at it through a different lens and they have different opinions that these people wouldn't dare offer and you're just like this mm -hmm. is this is great and it's you know hard raw footage and it's like yeah like i can i can relate to this it's relatability as long as yeah. it's still watchable and good content like you yeah. can sit there and have terrible video um like it doesn't have to look great but the main thing is the conversation flows and half the time i don't even watch a youtube video it's literally on in the background while i'm doing something else yeah at work but i just have headphones in my phone's in my pocket and i'm just listening to whatever it is exactly. Yeah, I'm usually listening to it on my phone, playing something on my Steam Deck, and I got something on the TV, too. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you guys. I, but I, <laughs> I would. I'm the same way. Yeah, I have something playing on my phone, something on the TV. I'm playing a Game Boy or my Switch, and yeah, and I wear. A, I'm playing. I have a Virtual Boy on, and I'm <laughs> playing a Sega on the game Oculus on top feet. of the Virtual Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm on a <laughs> Nintendo uh, Super Gamepad playing the track and field. <laughs> Give <laughs> Nintendo blob on and <laughs> yeah, it's got it all, dude. Um <laughs> hey, LJ, I want you to um tell us all about your podcast, man. So we we're kind of all over the place. Like we started off kind of doing a a poor man's retrospect. It was like my original vision of like looking at old games we play, new games we play, and doing like looking at it with a uh, without the nostalgia goggles and see if they actually hold up or <laughs> if they are just terrible. So that was my original thing. So we started doing that, but the editing for that and the capture and just all of the crazy work that went into that, I just, I didn't have the time for. So we switched it to now we're doing like, we're doing music and movies and games and we're doing just like, topics of games too like different things of like game collecting uh different kinds of things like topics physical versus digital uh arcades and and all that stuff so we're we're kind of taking all of our personalities and just meshing them together and the things that we truly enjoy and of course being a dad like we just had a 45 minute conversation uh this past episode that we just recorded of literally just what it's like to be a dad and these super deep conversation it's it's it gets pretty crazy yeah no it's just nice to have a platform and freedom to just talk about what you want and yeah and it's just nice to sit and talk talk, life, talk with somebody and uninterrupted just face to face like you do kind of get to those conversations that it's it's just nice to have every once in a while you get get a little teary-eyed here and there you know and you have the um, same host on with you throughout the shows. Yeah, yeah, Andy. That's one. Yeah, I've had uh, we've had some comments of people that are like, "How come you guys talk about things other than PlayStation physical <laughs> games?" And I'm like, <laughs> because after 155 episodes, like I'm, I'm we're not robots. Like we have other <laughs> things that we talk about, and it's like this is a real conversation, and <laughs> conversations go to where they go. It's yeah, like, I, I know. I mean, I don't. You know, every I don't conversation to... you can have about. Oh, I, by the way, guys, I collected a full PS3 set and blah 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 and blah blah blah. And <laughs> when you get really? twenty full PS3 set collectors on the show, there's not much more you can talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like just having all of the things that I'm into that we can sit down and talk about. And you know, Andy, he's he's not really like a collector. He doesn't have that in him. He's not super into like going he's he'll play retro stuff but he's not like into it like i am and watch the people that i watch so when we sit down and talk and have these like kind of debate talks it's a true like back and forth of two different views coming together it, it gets pretty interesting i did like what you brought up before about um are, they ga are games really nostalgic or are they just like, are they good or is it just nostalgia and that's such an interesting thing because if you didn't play a game back in the day, like it hasn't got that nostalgia factor. And it's like, is this good or is this just a bad game? And I can't understand why people get into it. Yeah. Like, like I'm, 
for example, uh, World Series baseball on the Sega Genesis. Horrible game. If somebody that hasn't played that game picked it up and they were like, this is a baseball game and it is absolutely terrible to play. Me, on the other hand, I can put that game in. I can play it for hours. The announcer is just classic. It's hilarious. It's it's so much fun. I could play it for so, so long. But anybody that just goes on the street and picks it up, there's be like, what what is this? Why? Why is he gloating about this? Mm hmm. Those are the so, best games, though, I think. I love the games that, like, you love that are still cheap because nobody seems to care about them. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to love games like that. I'm like, yay, finally one I can afford. <laughs> wee <-hoo." laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because all the ones that people are like, yeah, you have to play the Super Nintendo game. I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Let's look at bucks. price charting. Oh, it's $600. Yeah. Or it just it does in general. It sometimes like... backfire. I, I, I mean, use this game as an example. So this is a generic sport game, right, for the PS2. It's a game I had as a kid. It's called International Superstar Soccer Free. You're like, it's a soccer game. It'll be cheap, right? Wrong. It's like $40 because <laughs> everyone else who had this as a kid wanted it as well, and there wasn't many copies, and now it's like shut up in price, and everyone who played it's like, yeah, it's really, really good. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. It, you, you also do have the, like, there's a... A is in a college basketball game on the GameCube that's like insane because it was yeah, such well, limited. Games on PS3 for the same, I similar reasons, but the reasons why these ones are expensive is um they're NCAA titles and NCAA stopped doing their games, so these yeah. are the last games that you can buy. But on the NCAA games, you can customize rosters and you can add all the new players, and there's like communities out there playing NCAA 14 online and there's generally hundreds of people still playing these games like, that's the crazy thing like dollars. there's there's a set fan base for i feel like any type of game like that where they're just like updating the rosters and continuing to play because that's just that's just their game mm -hmm. yeah yeah i seen a tweet from uh it was one of those, it's not bar sports, it was one of those big American like sport companies. And they made a tweet about this game to like 50,000 people. And within a week, the game went from $50 to $150. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and it's like, it's not because collectors are buying it. No, this is people who generally want to play the game. It was like disc only copies selling for 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. All these people want to be involved in this community of that's insane. like, oh, this game I played 10 years ago, everyone's playing it again, and I get to play as like everyone knew that's what I want. That's awesome. To each their um, own. Yeah, so that's that 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 did you guys um like, uh, they're bringing it back this year too, which is exciting. I did see that they're bringing a new one, NCAA football. I was I was curious if that would actually finally drop the price of that uh last one that came out. I would assume so because I feel like most people bought it to play. Yeah, right, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, yeah, that that is the best game to get up. Do you know what I mean? It's like, um, um, I don't know, like the last Tiger Woods. Like, unless if they never make a new one, I guess the last one's like the best yeah. one still. You know, where a game like Silver Coden on PS One, if the new one comes out, it's not going to be instantly cheap because everyone who owns it's a collector, not someone who just owns it because they want to play it. So it's a completely different. Yeah. One one thing I did I wanted to bring up is that like when you were talking about, you know, these people who have these communities of their games and like that's their game and everything, is that one of the tragic things now, and we're seeing it um for forever, is that all those like live service online multiplayer games like eventually have this expiration date on them and they're going down. Like um have you guys did you guys see the the thing with the guy who's like starting a lawsuit about the crew? Did you see any videos about that? I th I think I just heard somebody talking about that. Uh, I just mm -hmm. watched a YouTube video where he was talking about it because I forget the reason, but it was because it went offline and then he couldn't play the game because it was like an always online game yeah, or something like that. Yeah, it's like a game that hasn't been out for that long. It's got like 14 million pl people playing or something like that or that play the game. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just, game, they're just but... shutting it off. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like brand new. It's been around for a while, but they're just taking it away from people. And, you know, people paid for this stuff. Some people paid a lot for this and they're just shutting it off. What if you bought a game and you bought a bunch of DLC and you bought, you know, you put $150 into a game and then it just shut it off. You have no way to play it anymore. 
Well, and, like, and this guy's perspective is he, he plays it every day. So imagine it was your mm-hmm. daily game you play, and then you just go to play it one day and it doesn't work. Like That would be yeah. awful. They just that's, take away your game. Yeah, yeah that's they, the they, worst part about like the, the whole physical versus digital thing is like for that exact reason is they it can just be ripped away from you because they don't want to continue the support for it. I had a comment on one of my videos this week about that game. I haven't replied to it yet, but I'll, I'll answer it on the show. And the question was, with the servers coming down, do you think this game is going to be expensive? And I, like, my answer is no. It'll be like the complete opposite because it was a game. That got a, yeah, it got a greatest hits version. It's literally going to be a one dollar title like Overwatch. No one wants this. You, GameStop It'll be like Destiny One. Accept it for trade ins because it doesn't play anymore. And, Maybe the collector's edition might be desirable or like the steelbooks or stuff, but really I don't see it being anything that anyone will want anymore. It's kind of sad. It's just a toast a coaster, as Joe said. Yeah, it's it's those kinds of games that you have to be online to play. And if the servers are gone, you just it's it's unplayable. So I, I I don't know about you guys, but like I've made it a point now that if I find I, I mean I buy accidentally buy games that are online only, but if I know ahead of time that the game is online only, I'm not buying a physical copy at all. I'm just not. It's completely pointless at that point to me. It literally is illogical and irrational to buy a physical copy. So I'm not saying I would never play a game like that. But I'm just gonna get it on PC when it's on sale for as cheap as possible at that point or or get it other ways if you know what i'm saying like i'm not buying that disc like i'm done with that that is illogical same thing with the switch games that say requires download to install the game like it's not all on the cart i just have no interest in those like there's too many other games i can buy that are complete that i want to buy to waste my time with that shit there's just it's just too many you know what i mean it's not like there's only three games I want, and that's how they are. There's a thousand games that aren't like that. So you guys, people have to be smarter with their money and just, you know, start thinking about what you own and what you're paying for, if you care. I mean, if you don't care, you don't care, and I get that. There's people who don't, but if you care about ownership and property, like, don't buy games that are online only. Just fucking skip them. You don't need that shit. You don't yeah, need you can, There's so many more games to play. That, I mean, the game releases now are so frequent, and there's so many like huge titles that come out. Just pick one of those to play. You're gonna have. You're gonna get your money's worth, and then some, and then you can just move on to the next thing. We were talking prior to the show that people aren't buying new games anymore. I think Joe brought up a stat that 80 percent of people are playing year, games yeah. that were released prior to this year. They were old games, like you know your Counter Strikes, your Overwatches, Twos, your CS League of Legends. Call of Duty, your Fortnites, your PUBGs. Like, that's where majority of people are these days because these games are releasing updates and patches and DLCs and season passes that, for the player base, makes it feel like a brand new game. Like, they're investing m- millions of dollars into these games still. Like, if you look at Fortnite today compared to five years ago, it's a completely different game. It may as well be Fortnite 5. <laughs> but it's not it's yeah. the same game and they've got mm-hmm. the same audience and there would be millions of people out there who bought the season pass in 2017 and haven't cancelled it and it's 2024 so why would the company make a new game they wouldn't they just continue to keep mm-hmm. the life cycle of this game i'm, I'm guilty i played geo and that's it and it's a game that came out in 2013 and this weekend there's a uh, qualifiers for the European uh, there's European qualifiers to get into the World Cup like it's as big as the game's ever been and it's not slowing down and I'm sure there's plenty of other games out there exactly the same so um going back to the original topic only 20% of people are playing new games that means only 20% of people are buying new games which is the concern yeah out of and so you know that's why like People look at you know how can all these companies be laying off these people and there's all this stuff and Philip says nobody's buying it and and and, and I'm, I'm not spending seventy dollars on new games like very rarely like even if there's a game that comes out that I want I'm, I I hold off I never buy it day one unless it's something like Final Fantasy Rebirth where I was like you know waiting three years for it to come out and very excited for it I bought that but that was like the last day one game I bought in a long time. 
And so, I don't know. Number one, I, it, there's a thought I've been over this a million times. There's a million reasons not to buy a game day one. It's too expensive. It doesn't work. It's missing patches. It's missing DLC. It doesn't have content. Um, you know, there's a thousand reasons not that I went. There's going to be a better version. There's going to be a complete edition. There's going to be a game a year. It's going to go on sale. There's just a million reasons not to buy a new game. So, I don't know. And I buy a lot of games, so I gotta imagine people who play casually, like you said, they're not going to. Like, why would you even spend money on games if you can just log in and play the game you've already been playing for ten years? And you know what I mean? You don't have you don't have to pay more money to play Fortnite again. Yeah, yeah. So, hundred percent. Yeah. Why Why would you pay a hundred dollars to play something that your friends probably aren't playing because they're already playing the same game and. Blah blah blah. It's it's rare that you find like whole communities switching over to new games, unless it's like, hey guys, Counter Strike servers went down, but we're all jumping over to Counter Strike Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Overwatch is down. Let's all play Overwatch Two. Things like that. Yeah. And Freaking... another thing I wanted to bring up is mm-hmm. games also cost more to make than ever before. I can imagine like, the it's... Whole, like laying off and blah 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 well the budgets are so much bigger than before and they have to make more money and if they're not then sorry that's going away yeah back like the the new game stuff like there's so many things that come out and when it comes to day one purchases i'm also in the camp of like it has to be something that i really want or i'm just gonna wait for the price to drop and with the popularity of like the live service games Fortnite. PUBG, Counter Strike, I feel like it kind of scratches that itch of people liking to play the lottery. Like they get good at a game and they throw on their webcam and they start streaming. Like they have that, like, it could happen to me or I could qualify for this. Mm-hmm. That's true. They all think they'll be famous. Become a pro. It's kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they watch so many people do it. Like they, they go to Twitch and they see, you know, people playing this game and they're like, well, I have a webcam. I have a computer. Let's or just even throw better yet. What I have a webcam. I have a computer. I have boobs. <laughs> yeah. Be a millionaire. Yep. Yeah. The thing is like it, I mean, I, I, I've been on into that scene for years and like, it is so much better experience doing that. I have had the best experience of my life playing games with people watching experiences that you can't have playing by yourself. It's not just about turning, hitting that live button, though. You also have to be entertaining yeah. and you have to you know, be engaging, and... be engaging, pull people yeah, in and hold hold attention spans because they're smaller than ever now. We can just go to a thousand different streaming services and pick something else. I so... wanted to bring something up. Have you guys seen the new Star Wars game? The Outlaws, Star Wars yeah. Outlaws and how it's being sold. What a what a joke! No, so it's being sold brand new. If you want the base version of the game, it's sixty nine ninety nine. However, if you want to play all the missions that come out when the game's initially released, all the missions that are in the game, you have to pay ninety nine ninety nine because two of the missions are locked behind DLC. <laughs> and then, if you want the deluxe edition with three days early access and a digital art book, not a physical, a digital art book. You get to play on it on re- for thirty dollars. You get to play on release day instead of having to wait like the plebs. However, if you pay nineteen ninety nine a month, you can subscribe and you get the best version. So, like, they're <laughs> trying to make it like you can see the deals are rip off, and you just instantly click that subscribe model. Like, well, they're- people are people are going to buy it. Any that's what they're doing. They're catering to the consumer, and they're just going to buy it. That people are just gonna buy it. It has Star Wars on it. They're just gonna. I want it. I want it. Now. And I'm sure there'll be people uh, out there going, "I'm smarter than them. I'm gonna beat this game in a month. Cancel my subscription and pay twenty bucks for it." <laughs> but see, yeah. the problem is, if ten it's people time, go into that time to release, eight of them will forget, or five of them will forget, and then that mm-hmm. money comes out the next month, and suddenly you've paid fifteen dollars for twelve months for a game you don't even play anymore, and it's like, what's this? Thing that just came out of my account oh that's your star wars subscription for that game that you downloaded a year ago like oh it's so gross yeah i i i will say this a million times until i die like stop letting companies abuse you and like like this is this is not what gaming is about guys 
gaming should not be some sort of thing that's created that infinitely sucks money out of you. Like, that's not what a game is. It shouldn't be something that you have to pay for forever all the time. And it, that's absurd. Like, it should, you buy it, you own it, you play it, you're done, and you can sell it. That's what a game should be. Like, anything else, you guys, you're the game at this point. You have to realize these companies, they're playing you, you freaking idiots. <laughs> stop buying these games. Like People will never stop buying it, though. Dude. They just they just throw their money care. at it without even thinking. Yeah. And Some that's people are why wealthy. They, that's why we they Don't continue care. to do it. They just people they know people are just going to be the whales and they're just going to spend all the money. Yep, and I'm not. It telling really people, needs to you come can't, from but... the gaming community as a whole and be like, we're boycotting this game because that's not what how we want to buy our games. Like I bought the Hitman free game day one. You know, I, I've loved Hitman since PS2 era. Like some of my favorite games are Hitman games. I bought it day one, right? Day one, brand new game. I paid full price. I got to mission 10 and you have to buy mission 10 as DLC. Let me just, (laughs) mission 10 is what they use on the front cover. It's what sold the game is this mission where you kill Hitler, blah, blah, blah. You can't play the mission they're advertising unless you pay (laughs) for it. Day one. Like, make it make sense. I sold my copy without playing the final mission because. Mm -hmm. I couldn't just buy it, you know. With the consumer thing and like just people being whales and spending all the all the money, have you either of you played Magic the Gathering? Oh yeah, of course. I've collected the cards. I haven't played it though. So when they, I guess probably a few years ago, they their CEO switched, and they have just been a machine of pumping out so much product, limited edition, special prints, alternate arts special collections they uh merge with other uh ips like final fantasy yeah, they did like lord of the all out lord of the rings stuff. yeah 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 and it's just they reprint some of the old like, they did the all cards. they did a, a collector's 35 35th anniversary uh of like the classic original set so they did like these special arts for it like so much product that if you're a consumer of that it is literally impossible to buy it all you can't, mm-hmm. and that I just that ruins crying. it. I just that stopped crying. It. I'm like they're they're putting out too much stuff. I can't keep up. It's mm-hmm. I'm just gonna spend my entire bank account. Like just I gotta yep. stop. That's limited run syndrome. We should call that. I, I was yeah. about to say limited run. I, I, I wonder. There was a point where I'm like I'm gonna own every limited run game because the idea of physical games that aren't available anywhere else, like digital games that aren't available anywhere else, coming to physical is awesome. And then 40 games later and like three coming out in the same week and me going, I can't afford this. And three ad- three different editions, by the way. Yeah. The and regular like- edition, the middle edition, that's that's cool. Then the super edition with the steel book. And like you can only get each version if you buy all fucking three of them with all the three cover variants and all the crap. Like you said, it's like it's where it's like abuse at some point. And they know their yeah. audience are collectors predominantly who OCD full sets who want yeah. all of them because guess what mm-hmm. they numbered them all and you got to have them all in order and hey by the way guys if you still got a full set after three years we're gonna send you something special and all this other shit like yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's I disgusting know. man it's so it's so disgusting yeah not but to mention some... you get your game in two years <laughs> yeah there's a uh... yeah but you know what's crazy is like. There are people out there that are like, yeah, whatever. I've spent a quarter million dollars with limited run and I plan on getting everything that comes out. And so people if you're a business the money. It, so yeah, if you if you're and if you're a business, you're there to make money. So it's like I'm not mad at anybody for how it is. I don't think I don't want anything to change. It's just what it is. It's like, ugh, it's too bad. It's like I remember a similar thing happened when I used to play World of Warcraft. I used to like collecting uh, mounts in the game, in-game mounts, flying mounts, horses, shit like that rare mounts it was super fun and like at one point i had like a you know like a ton of them and i enjoyed it and there was like maybe 30 in the game i didn't have total right well you know over the years with the expansions and like there was a couple expansions where they were just like you know what we're adding like 200 mounts this expansion 
So there's there's this green bowl, and then there's a purple version, a blue version, a yellow version, a red version, a pink version. It's all the same goddamn thing. They just reskinned it and made it like you know different color hat on it or some shit. And they just put so many in the game that I was like, all right, well this is overwhelming now, and it's no longer fun, and it's actually a chore now. You've made this not fun because it's not like one or you know I can go for one or two here and there and keep it. You know, it's like a reasonable goal that's obtainable. Now it's this overwhelming, insane goal that I have no interest in doing. So I just like stopped and like that. They kill like their own, they their business practices, like they're counterproductive is what I'm trying to say. Like yeah. they, they, they overdo it and it actually get pushes customers away instead of keeping them on the hook, keeping them reeling them in. You're like, no, you're, you're overdoing it. At least that's what it's something I wanted to bring up that we've mentioned um, for years on this show now. The game that came out, I believe, 18 months ago called uh, Paptura. Um, so the, the Paptura hasn't been sent out yet. Now, it was sold through Beardemic, and it was a really cheap game. It was like $15 for a brand new Switch game plus like $10 international postage. Well, the developer came out this week on Twitter and has basically said that it's not happening. Everyone's going to supposedly get a refund in the next couple of weeks. And they're going to be publishing the game through someone else. My question is, how much interest do you think they've made on our money over the last two years? Like, that's a real thing. Bitcoin suddenly shot up. Is that why you're refunding us all? <laughs> like, you've cashed out? Like, seriously, it feels like it generally feels Oh, my feels God, like that's a game. brilliant idea. I'm going to announce It's like they're game. taking a loan out, but they're not taking a loan from a bank. They're just sourcing their money from the the crowd and then they're putting it somewhere and they're like okay maybe they won't notice we'll, we'll just delay it a couple of months and just see see what we can make when i bought this game it sounded too cheap i know how much switch games cost to make it didn't make sense to me that they were making profit like it feels like we literally were just lending the money and I, we haven't got refunds yet either by the way so it's, that's wild it's so shady yeah yeah, that was one I actually didn't fall for. I'm like, I was like, no, nah, nah, I don't trust this. <laughs> I didn't trust it. I was like, like you said, it was like less than $20 to get a game shipped to my house from Germany. And I'm like, it's like $15. It's like $15 to like put it in the cart, like make a cart and put it in a case at least. Like, you know, it's like, and then to ship it from Germany, I'm pretty sure that's at least five, six bucks right there. So this is like, like you said, it was like, I don't believe this at all. And then There's they got to no make way. profit and pay employees, and you have taxes, and yeah, it doesn't make sense. So. Yeah, that that <laughs> that that is really shady. I, I wish someone would look into it because it's a serious. Like, I mean, they've had thousands of customers' money now for a long time. What do they do with that money? Does it just sit in a bank account and accrued interest, or they invested it? Like, these are questions that I don't hear anyone asking. They probably just did a bunch of cocaine. <laughs> I mean, it's the same as first press games, really. Like, you know, they've had people's money since 2019 and haven't delivered. It's like, what are they really doing with this? That's a crazy thing with the, like, the whole limited run, like, the limited pr printing of, you know, these digital to physical games where it's basically you order the game and then once all the orders are done then they start the manufacturing process which takes forever wow. and then you're you completely forgot you even bought the game and then you get a package in the mail and you're like i didn't order anything when did that practice become normalized like if you told me in 2014 that i was going to pre-order a game and get it in two years i'd be like pig's ass i'm not even going to pre-order a game for a week yet but suddenly I'm doing it because there's no other way to get these things. And after it comes out, it's more on eBay and you don't want to miss out and all this other bullshit that comes along with it. But it's like today, they don't want to, that's waste of money that no one's buying. That That's the reason they don't, they don't want to have all this stock that they can't sell because they printed a million copies and only 500,000 of them sold. So now they have 500,000 copies and all this money tied up into those and now they can't get rid of it so now it's just money that's just they could they have to sit on isn't that just what normal shops are though i mean yeah <laughs> but you sh you should at least do like 
you know, a print of a hundred thousand or gauge your interest and then base it off of that for your initial print run. And if there's more interest, do another one. That's how most companies work in, throughout the world, right? Look at look at what Amazon do. If you buy or pre-order anything on Amazon, you don't get charged until it's ready to be shipped to you. Like you can yeah. pre-order something today. If it's not there, they're not going to charge you until it's in the warehouse and you know you're going to get it soon. That is such a good practice. Yeah. I, I know I Play Asia would do things like they don't put their games up for pre-order until, okay, this game will be ready to ship in a couple of weeks. So now we can put it up for pre-order and things like that. Or, hey, guys, look what we've just found in the warehouse. It's in stock. That's great. It means I'm going to get it a few weeks after I buy it. But not just, oh, here's our new release. Um, artwork TBA because it hasn't been produced yet. Yeah, they shouldn't By the way, guys, money if you want a complete ready version, to we're going to delay it for another 12 months. So, I mean, I'll be honest, I think that that's um, that this whole thing that with the open pre-orders, that's a reaction to people's complaining about how it used to be when the it would all sell out in five minutes. I don't know if you guys remember what, how it used to be. Yeah, I that remember that. that sucked, too, when it was like we got 3000 copies and then the website just crashes five times and then it sells out. And then, oh, now you got to pay three times the price because it's on eBay. And so that sucked, too. So it's like. I get why they did it, but like, I feel like it should be like a kind of a, like you said, it should be like a middle of the road thing where it's like they should print like some ahead of time, do the open pre order, ship them out. And then, like, you know, you could even say, like, send an email, be like, hey, our first allotment has been sold out. You're part of lot two. You're going to get your game later or something. Like, you know, yeah, you, you know, we want to make sure everybody who wants a copy gets one. So we're going to add your order to our second lot. You know, next time pre-order faster. Screw you, know, whatever. And you know, something. Well, I don't like, know. Um, I don't know what a good answer is. Put themselves in the foot by coming out and saying that we're not going to reprint our games, and you know, there's only going to be one print of them, and blah blah blah. Right? Doing that from the start, where really, like, we just, majority of people just want the games. Like, they're buying them because they're gamers, and they want these games that are digital only. It's not because they want a rare game. I, I'm not going out buying something because I want a rare game. It's I want a game because I want that game. It's a cool game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, it's limited. the Final Fantasy uh, pixel remaster thing. That that whole debacle. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to have that to play on my PlayStation Five, but I'm not spending upwards of a thousand dollars for a physical copy. Come so on, Square Enix, reprint it. Hurry up. <laughs> the only thing that lets me sleep at night is that um. On the Switch, you can get the Pixel Remastered, which is 1 through 6, and then they re-released 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10, 2 on the Switch. So you can get 1 through 10, 2. I think you can also get 12 as well, I think. 11's online only, so that doesn't... Yeah, and then 13 you can't, and then 14 you can't, but I think 12 as well. Either way, you can get like 1 through 10 chronologically all on the Switch. <laughs> Stupid PlayStation. <laughs> They only have the Pixel Remastered 1 through 6. They never release 7 again. They have 8, and then they didn't do 9, and then they have X and X2. So you can't get the 7 and 9. No, they did 9. It was only a PAL version, though. Was there on PlayStation? Yeah, I'm sure of it. PS4? I didn't know if they remade 9. I didn't know if that was a thing. I know they did 8. But uh, either way, like that at least makes me feel a little bit better. Oh, sorry, like I'm thinking I... of 8. My bad. Yeah, yeah. So if they had... um all of them available on the playstation i couldn't get one through six that my ocd would be like off the fucking charts you know what i'm saying that would make yeah. me so upset but you can't so like i have it all on the switch so i'm like yeah that's fine like a I've, I've held off on <laughs> playing them on like I, I would love to have like the physical way to play them on like the playstation especially but yeah i just i, I just can't buy it digitally i just can't bring myself to do it I still can't understand how this has gone down. Like Square Enix, are like the one company that reprints everything, and they released a low print of like the most anticipated collection of all time. Like <laughs> and they, they sold it, it at like two a.m. It's on the Switch, and it like the Switch copy is super like, like affordable and reasonable. At least it was when I looked at it. But why? It's why like not to have it for PlayStation? Why? 
Well, it was going to there was going to be an English version in Asia, and it got cancelled. Like the PS4 English Asian version was cancelled. It was yeah. up for pre order for like two days, and then they took that down. So like, it was really weird. And now well, it's a thousand dollar game, and I'm, <laughs> you can't tell me that the people that work there aren't aware that this game's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. That's I don't remember what somebody said that's like what they did is that now everybody's getting like five copies of the game and for a bonus this year. Well, you know what I mean? That's is that's what, <laughs> that's, is yeah. that what's happening? Like, I mean, wouldn't you if you were worked at the company and you saw these things were selling for a thousand bucks a piece online and you still had a box of them? Would you just give them out to people and be like, sell them on eBay, boys? Christmas, congratulations! Brothers. Here's here's five thousand dollars. Here's five thousand for you. Here, you know what I mean? Like it's it's just crazy. it's the equivalent of giving the jelly of the month club. But I also have to wonder how many people out there are actually willing to spend that much on the game. Like I know there's a decent amount of folks out there apparently, but that's shocking. I, mean, I know a few people that have, and they're our friends. Sure, like, they're just hardcore collectors and. You know they have so FOMO, how many like are there? FOMO before and hundred people? How many people out there are dropping a thousand dollars on a PS4 game? I just don't. I'm curious. I hope not many. I'm going to open eBay quickly and just have a browse on how many have sold recently because like they sell all the time. time. It's crazy to me. It's I think that way about uh when I see like you know all these rules of roses and coupons and. Hunting yeah. grounds, trading ground, trading hands like constantly online. I'm just like, how many people out there want to buy freaking Kuan? I feel this like crazy. Those, those games you get influenced on like the the YouTube and all of the yeah, influencers and stuff. Like you Gives get you that, like... by that. I got I got caught up in that like during like all the shutdowns and stuff when I was building my collection. I was just collecting stuff that it was like, oh, I just saw this on a video. Like people said it was good. I'm just gonna scoop it up. Yeah, and then I, I had a moment where I was like, "What am What am I? Why am I collecting this stuff?" So I just I sold pretty much my whole collection, and now I'm starting like, I have you know a couple of shelves over on the wall, but nothing near what I had. I'm doing the same. I've been selling my collection for almost two years now, and it's still like a ridiculously huge collection, well over two and a half thousand video games, and I'm never going to play them all, and you know, struggle to fit them all in one room, but I've literally sold half my collection. Like more than I've sold more than half of um size of the collection because I sold all my collector's editions and I went and sold a lot of the box consoles and the stuff that just takes up like so much a space. kiosk because it took up like a third of a room. And I just got rid like of my that. kiosk too. <laughs> yeah, and I I haven't once said, you know what, I really want to play that kiosk. Yeah, I actually traded my kiosk for like a bunch of like random stuff. I even got like these here just because I wanted to make the trade. It's the Japanese Pokemon games. Oh, nice one, man. Ooh. I've been thinking about buying the Japanese Pokemon games box because like, I want the original box Pokemon games, but I don't want to spend $5,000 to get a full Yeah, they're set. much cheaper. Yeah, and they look amazing. They're, dude, I swear to God, yeah. every game. Yeah, they I do. Order these from art Japan, to me always looks just so much better. Every time I get a game from Japan, it shows up in amazing condition. Like, and I don't care. Like, it could be a game from 1993. It shows up and it's like perfect shape. I'm like, wow. But that that's just how game. Japan works. And in oh, Japan, it's, like, if a game's look at gonna how in beautiful, that is. That's and it's just a nice little like Japanese art. It's just. I don't know, man. In Japan, Japan if a game's got an imperfection, impressive. it's put in a different section in the shop, and it's sold as a damaged game. I've bought damaged games from Japan before, and I've looked at them like, this is perfect condition. I still can't work <laughs> out why this is damaged, but that's just how they treat games in Japan. That's... Apparently, they have really high standards of, of things over there. Meanwhile, yeah, over here, it's like, oh, it's a loose disc. And it's got a few scratches, but it still plays the first half of the game. So full price, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Here, here, someone will take someone will take a loose disc and throw it in a freaking 
like you know a fucking country album from 1993 and just be like complete in box 500 bucks you're like what that's not even like it's like, a mario like, game i know what i have you're like achy breaky heart this ain't the manual what is this <laughs> I had a Facebook post a couple of weeks ago and it was like retro vintage PlayStation and every single game was like a burnt CD case where someone had written in text of the name of the game and it was like $600 for the lot. The Facebook marketplace stuff oh, it's makes it. me want to cry every single time I browse because people just like, I have video games, I'm a millionaire. Yeah, $600 for, I have a stack of PlayStation 1 games and they have like four like scratched up greatest hit games and a couple of fucking like ten dollar games i'm like they just okay. pulled them out of the mud or the back of a pickup truck and they're like mm, 200 they just yeah people just say yeah, know, retro games are worth a lot so these have to be worth at least 50 a piece right mm -hmm. i'm like no i hate to break it to you that <laughs> nhl fucking 97 on the playstation or whatever is not worth 50 dollars. <laughs> it's about 50 cents yeah. i actually just want to take the case and throw away the game so can i just give you like 50 cents <laughs> yeah i'm ready for the you quiz. guys like to uh play the fizzy quiz yeah i'm ready yeah we have a little quiz we like to do on this podcast lj so uh, yeah, let's do it Now, we do have a quiz for Chad as well. And Chad have had the same question for two weeks now, and no one's got it. So we've made the chat question a little bit easier. I've added an extra hint. Good luck. This is Chad's question. We have two extra hints. This is our third week of having the same question. No one's got it. So you guys in chat have to name the video game from the photos. And while I'm setting up the quiz, I'm just going to leave this up for a second. All right, let's get into it, guys. So the Stuart. way today's quiz is going to work, um, I actually came up with today's quiz. A little bit of fun. I sent the idea to Pavel, and he made it into a quiz. So let's do it. So, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts 2004 had a player's poll. 2024 had a player's poll asking for the most iconic video game characters of all time. And they published a list of the top 20. You guys are going to have to name those video game characters in order. Uh, so, you both are going to have five strikes each. LJ, you'll go first. Joe will go second. Uh, one point for a correct answer. Let's get into it. You're up, LJ. So I'm after an iconic video game character, as voted by the players of the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. So, I mean, it has to be Mario as one of them. Mario. Yes. Why can't I find Mario? So I actually saw some of this list. So I Am know I, okay. some of the answers uh, already. And this was trending on Twitter in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, because so it, it was a it, in the list. It was an absurdly stupid ass list, in my opinion. <laughs> and Mario <laughs> is at number two. LJ yeah, takes yeah. The first point. And guess who's you want to know who number one is? You want to know who the most iconic, recognizable game character of all time is, according to these fucking retards. No offense. Uh Lara Croft. Yeah, because that's the most Iconic, recognizable game character of all time. These people are really number one crazy. is Lara Croft. Is no, no, no. I would Lara have guessed Croft. Link or or Zelda. Yeah, well, that should be your next answer. Link or Zelda yeah. comes in at number seven. Mort, what's up, buddy? Yeah. So the comments of um these lists were very controversial. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> I these lists. I swear it, it's like um it's like when people like purposely will say like. My favorite part is when uh, you know Zelda saves the princess. They'll like pr they'll like purposely <laughs> say something yeah. wrong to evoke the, the nerd rage from the gaming community. I feel like that's what this list was. They purposely were like, "This'll 
really rile up the nerds because <laughs> I was immediately like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, some of them are like, oh, good. All right, Joe, you're up. What's next? Um, so we said he said Link and Mario, and, and I said, okay. Um, so in my opinion, this is the most absolutely hands down recognizable video game character of all time. I don't care what anybody says. If you show this character to everyone in the world from age one to age 1000, you're going to get more people who recognize this than any other character in the video game world. That's fucking Pac-Man. Everyone knows what Pac-Man is. Everyone sees that little yellow circle and knows that's pa what Pac-Man is. I reckon, I, I reckon even, Pikachu if you've would take Pac-Man. Never. No fucking way. I could show a corpse Pac-Man and they'll be like, Pac -Man! <laughs> they'll know what Pac-Man is. Well, Everyone Pac -Man knows. Came in at number six. Yeah, so was I know that's wrong. It's not. All right, LJ, wrong. you're up. Should be Ma Pac-Man, Mario, and then Link. Those, <laughs> that should be the top three. I don't. It's sorry, I'm a little passionate about this. We're never gonna get uh, through this. <laughs> I'll say Sonic. <laughs> yeah, Sonic. Sonic's in at number four. And you could argue that Sonic should be in that top three list you just named, Jack. <laughs> I could, I, I would imagine he would make the top three at least. But not to modern kids, though. Like, they have Sonic's just this thing that is a PlayStation game or a Switch game. It's not a Sega, you know. Well, they have the movies title. too. My daughter yeah, loves that's... movies. That's my All right, Jay, you're up. Snake is on there, I think. Metal Gear. Solid Snake comes in at number 14. All right, LJ. Uh, Cloud Strife. Cloud? Cloud Strife comes in at number 16. Is uh, Nathan Drake on there? Yep, coming in at number 20. <gasps> I think he deserves to be a little higher than that. Yeah. Well, PlayStation very... don't use him as the mascot. Like the where of, this is a very PlayStation biased podcast, so we're obviously going to be like, <laughs> Crash Bandicoot <laughs> should be in the top five. Yeah. I mean, it's PlayStation's fault that their mascots aren't as high because they haven't stuck with mm. one. Right? That's that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, my turn? Is who, oh, Joe or me? Oh, sorry. No, LJ, you're up. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot's in there at number 15. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Kratos. Kratos. Number nine. Number nine. All right, there's 10 left. Starting to get down to the tough ones. Yeah, it'll start to get harder. Now, I will say that this is definitely biased towards modern games and recent releases. Interesting. Cuber. Right, I'm just kidding. No, that's not my answer. Uh, I said Spyro the Dragon. Spyro the Dragon is not on there. That's your first. What? Try. Ouch. Uh, I mean, it's like sun. It's like all of a sudden, it's my brain stops working. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like, I don't know any new franchise. Is there like a character from Grand Theft Auto that would be famous? I feel like that would be a good one, but I can't think of who that would be. You're on the right track, but not really. That's the hint I'm going to give. Yeah. Um... God, super. I'm trying to think of like massive franchises. Uh... Wait, did we say Pikachu? We did not. Pikachu is number 12. Oh, thank God. <laughs> LJ, you're up. Uh, Aloy. Aloy is not on there. Another strike. Ouch. Yeah. Mm. Oh, good. Mm. I can't cheat. <laughs> Too many games around. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Super iconic. 
Super iconic games. It, like these are the ones that I hate when you read me the answers because every single one's like a dagger in my heart because it's like yeah. I, I love popular. that you've actually seen the list too because you you you've yeah, seen it. <laughs> I, I have seen the list. I just I'm not I didn't freaking memorize. Should have I should have been like, oh shit, this is gonna be the quiz this week. Is it? <laughs> You're reading this tweet going, what a load of shit this is. Meanwhile, I'm reading the tweet going, I can use this in the quiz. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. The dude from Assassin's Creed. What's his name, Bob? I'll, I'll give you the name, Ezio, that he's not on there. Okay. Shit. All right. Well, Jen? Um, I'm going to go Donkey Kong. That's a good one. How is Donkey Kong not on the list? What? What? Absurd. Donkey Kong is not on there. I've been, I've been robbed. Some of these characters, I actually don't even know their names. So you and said that they, that they were like heavily influenced by like recent releases, correct? Yeah, recent releases, definitely. Some of them on there are new games, and I haven't heard of these characters. Which is crazy that Aloy isn't on there because she's been like heavily pushed by Sony mm. as like their mascot, and it's crazy that Spyro isn't on there. But I can understand Spyro not being on there. But Aloy, and then not having Donkey Kong. Ah, that. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Yoshi because it can there be multiple Mario characters. No Yoshi. Bullshit. He's right there. That's my Not favorite on. character. That's hey. I feel like a lot of people will recognize Yoshi. Shit. Your turn, brother. Uh, Master Chief. Master Chief oh, comes in one. at number eight. Smart. Smart. That's a good one. First Halo answer. I mean, first Xbox answer. I'm going to say... See, I don't know. Is Jack and Daxter that popular? I think so, but maybe I'm going to say Jack and Daxter. No? Jack and Daxter. I'll, I'll take both of them. Neither of them on the list. Wow. Okay, so the scores are now six apiece. You both have three strikes. LJ, you're Oh, up. fuck. Uh, eight answers left on the board. So, uh, do I want to go with an answer that I think might be there, or do I want to take a gamble and have it be one of my favorite characters from a franchise? Uh, I'll go Leon Kennedy. Oh, Leon's not on there. Hmm. We you got the one strike left, LJ. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say. Can I say Ken and Ryu from Street Fighter? Does it have to be? Can I say both? Or? I can't. Ken and Ryu, neither of them are on there. Wow. So you also have one strike left. All right, LJ, how is this going to work? You got one strike left. However, if you get it wrong, it's then going to go to sudden death. <laughs> Eject it off the show. <laughs> if Joe gets it wrong as well. Luck. <laughs> uh, hmm. Princess Peach. On the list. All right, Joe. To win the game, all you have to do is name one of them that are on the list. I want to say Mega Man, but I want to say I was pissed off because he wasn't on the list. I think I remember him not being on there and that made me mad. So I will say Kirby. Kirby not on the list. Damn. All right. We had yeah. to ride. So this is going into overtime. Before I get used to answering another one, I'm going to give some clues out. Um, so number three is on the list. Number three was released on multiple platforms. Number five's on the list is a PlayStation exclusive. Number 10 and 17 are from the same game that was PC and Xbox exclusive, but now is on PlayStation as well. Number 11 is on multiple platforms. Number 13 is on multiple platforms. Number 18 is on multiple platforms. And number 19 is a PlayStation exclusive. You're up, LJ. Well, uh, sudden death, however, if... You answer one right, Joe will still have the chance to draw. So I'm going to take it 
since it's heavily involved by things that are new and things that may be into pop culture as well, I'm going to go with Joel or Ellie from The Last of Us. Ellie Williams is number 19. LJ takes the point. Nice. That was the PlayStation exclusive one at the end. All right, Joe. LJ's got seven points. To stay in the game, you must answer one. I remember one that was on there. I remember now. What is it? I think Sackboy was on there. Sackboy he was, was really high, high, too. Yeah, he was wicked high, too. I remember being furious. I'm like, That's... Sackboy is not more popular than Mega Man. This is no. some bullshit. Was the other PlayStation this, I know. That's why when you said the exclusive, that's what triggered it. I was like, oh, yeah, Sackboy was on that. But <laughs> shit, I'm out of it. That's it now. I got nothing, dude. I do not know any of these other All right. Ones. We have six answers left. It's in the sudden death round two. LJ, you're I'm up. Sorry, I should have just got it wrong, dude. Huh. <laughs> I don't know anymore, man. I'm All the ones, like, there's so many that haven't been there that should be. So I'm like, this has to be one, but I'm like, well, the way it's been going, it can't be. Uh I'm gonna say and I'm it's probably not on there, but uh, before you um, answer, I do want to give a clue. Um out of all these titles, I believe only one of them is available on Nintendo and it's on multiple platforms. That should be it. I'm just going to go with what I was originally going to say. Star Fox? Hmm. Star Fox isn't on there. I'm sorry. I, I, figured. I figured. All right, Joe. To win the game, all you have to do is answer one. Hmm. No pressure. Um... <laughs> Popular games. I don't know. Have I played games before? Um, I thought I nailed it with Ryu, Ken and Ryu. That still makes me mad, too. I can't believe they're not on there. Shit. Um, Some of these are wild answers. Fucking Conquer. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm going to say Dante from Devil May Cry. Dante, it's not on there. For real? Oh. Yeah. Well, we're going to round three of sudden death because we haven't got a winner yet. This is calling it a tie, man. We don't need to, like, this is giving me great pieces. Is, like, on the the board. One of these can still win. <laughs> is Banjo-Kazooie. Not on the list. Yeah? <laughs> what is this list? It was a controversial one, that's for sure. I'll say. Uh... Uh, who the fuck? Who else? F -f Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> All right, we'll have oh. one more round, and then if we don't have a winner, I will call it a draw. Okay. Um. trying to think of like a wild card from like a brand new game that just came out not long ago uh i'll give you a hint i think it's the T biggest Tifa? selling game of all time Isn't that gta motherfucker wait what was your what was your hint biggest selling game of all time is on there Ooh. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna say Tifa, Tifa Lockhart. Tifa didn't make it. Yeah. Still think it's a GTA character you're talking about, but I don't know them that well. But uh, I've, I was um biggest selling games. Um, this is my last try. All right. So I'm think it's either I'm thinking it's, it's either GTA, Minecraft. Or fucking the dude from The Witcher. So I'm going to go with The Witcher, dude. Good answer, but not Geralt? on there. He's not Guys, on there. 
I'm declaring today's quiz a draw. Well done. <laughs> oh, shit. Was it a creeper? The creeper. That's the thing from Minecraft, right? So we had number 18. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool one. Was Kazuma Karu from Yakuza. Surprised okay. that he was on the list. I almost okay, said Shenmue, number... the guy from Shenmue, but I didn't think he would. Yeah, number 10 and number 17. I've never heard of these characters because I've played this game for five hours. There was a game of the year last year, Baldur's Gate 3. We have two characters from Baldur's oh, Gate 3. I have Nicholas. no idea. Shadow Heart and Astarion. Never heard of them. Yeah, they're way more recognizable than fucking Pac Man or whatever. <laughs> or Mega Man or Donkey Kong. Yeah. Mega Man or Donkey Kong. You, you almost got this one, Joe. Number 13 was from Minecraft, biggest selling game of all time. Okay. The character whose name was Steve. I mean, the green is blocked or something. Or... <laughs> See, I don't know um, any, any characters. In... Yo, you wanted to say Grand Theft Auto? Mm -hmm. Not on there. But another Rockstar franchise was on there. Arthur, uh, Morgan, Arthur Morgan. Red Dead Redemption 2. Yep. Oh. Uh, okay. See, Arthur became an iconic character that people associated with. Where GTA 5 yeah. had three characters, so I was split between the three. And... Makes yeah. sense. If there was a Grand Theft Auto one, I would have guessed like CJ or something. The one I'm surprised that you guys missed, because this one's actually an iconic character. We've even mentioned it in the podcast already today. And that was number three with Agent 47 from Hitman. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just going to bring up the full list so you guys can um, all see. Let's see. We guys got the pictures of the characters too. The Yakuza one just doesn't make any sense. The Baldur's Gate 3 one I could see, but... Two of them? like <laughs> yeah. I, that, Two of them I, is insane. The I actually don't Gate recognize that character at number 10. I recognize number 17. And it's crazy that Agent 47 is on there, but Dante... I feel like Dante is a little bit more popular than Agent 47. Just I, maybe in my opinion, but... That's why this list made me so mad. Like, seriously, like half the people I think should be on it weren't. Oh, you could be not in the UK because it was a British list. So who knows? Maybe that had something to do with it. It was controversial. It made for a fun quiz. Thanks for playing. <laughs> yeah, well, whoever now made that list. See if I'm anyone got in the harbor. A chat question. I'm just scrolling back quickly. That much. What does A cup backwards have to do with anything? I don't <laughs> fucking understand. <sighs> well, looks like chat question will be staying because no one's correctly answered it yet, guys. Oh, The Last of Us just come out and said only 4,000 people voted for the list. So that, that's probably why the list is so bad. <laughs> Met we have a source that's... from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts. That's where it's probably a bunch of old people. Do you really think more people will recognize fucking Lara Croft than Pac Man? That that is what Lara yeah. Croft is. Unless yeah, it's she's recognizable, she hasn't like... been popular for. Is she recognizable? Now. They change her character model every fucking game. She looks completely different. Like, are you sure? Like, I I don't even know. Like, the only thing I could think of it's because she's got boobs. The pointy ones, ones, taken, ones that are triangles. Taking a male audience that don't play video games into consideration or something. I don't, I don't know. Oh, if you were asking who has the finest video game boobs, then I agree, number one. But that's a <laughs> different discussion. Yeah. You know? Number two is Fester from Fester's Quest. Uh, someone <laughs> asked the plot for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make that list. Let's turn the show into that. Let's make the deuce. That's what we should start doing. We should start making our own list. Top 10 finest broobs in video games. <laughs> you guys got any um, pickups to show off this week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got some stuff. I don't think so. I haven't bought something in quite... Actually, no. I bought this little gem. Not video game related, but... When I was into Pokemon cards when I was a kid, my parents got me this little value guide. <laughs> Can we check out the prices today? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Charizard in here, it says, let's see, where is it at? 
This card stinks. First Crash edition it. value is two hundred and forty dollars. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. I'll give you two fifty. <laughs> 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 Ten dollars over market price, guys. I'm I'm a generous man. <laughs> That's the only pickup that I've gotten over the the past couple of months. That's actually really cool, considering like what's happened to Pokemon cards over the last decade. Yeah, I I saw it immediately, and I was like, I have to buy that. That I can't let that go. I love how clean your setup is, man. The C three PO Xbox three sixty, all the CDs, all the cards behind you. It looks I've got the Star Wars posters hung there. Some little figures there. What's uh, that? Uh, yeah, poster collage poster. Me. Yeah, yeah. I was curious. Is that anime or something? What is that? Uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. Uh, okay. Nice. That's by far my favorite anime. I even got the the pocket watch tattooed on my arm there. Oh, nice. That's cool. The date is I incorrect because I put my wife and I's wedding anniversary in there. Nice. It's nice to have a personal touch to something as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't watch that anime without crying like a baby. Yeah. I've never seen it. I'm, I'm just actually getting back into anime. It is recently. so good. I, I'm not a huge anime guy, but mm -hmm. like that just snagged me and was oh, just. That's crazy. Oh, uh, it was so. Cool Grab so is saying he's got the same tattoo as well. <laughs> what was his name? Based on that name, I feel like that <laughs> might be Andy. I think that might be Andy. Just based on that name. <laughs> we have a group chat with all of us in it, and we call each we call each other that constantly. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> he said, <"How> you know? <laughs> I knew it. I knew Busted. it. Busted. <laughs> Kook Crabber. <laughs> Sorry, that's so funny. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, I'll show off my pickups since we're talking about anime. Um, yeah, like I don't know about you guys, but like I think all TV and movies suck shit ass these days, and I don't want to watch them anymore. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna go back in time and buy everything I used to like and rewatch that. So I'm kind of going through that phase, just purchasing the stuff that I liked from back in the day. So I, I grabbed the um, good old Devilman Complete Series, 1987 to uh, 1990. Um, this show's awesome, if you've never seen it. It's also got, like, a, it got remade, I think. There's, like, a re remake from 2016 of it called Devilman Crybaby. Think I'm not an anime expert, so don't get they'll be mad at me if I get stuff wrong. And then there's another one, uh, in the same world. Well, there's a couple other ones. One that made the best title ever. There's one that's called Devil Man Lady, which I think is the greatest name of anything. It's basically a female version of Devil Man, but instead of just calling it Devil Lady, it's Devil Man Lady. I don't know why. I just fucking love that. I think that's hilarious. And then there's another series that I am uh, I'm gonna pick up soon. It's called Violence Jack, and I guess that's based in the same world as, as this. And um, yeah, they're just like super dark, ultra violent, graphic, fucking adults, horrific animes that no one should watch. But I don't know. That's my type of shit. I like horror movies. I like shit that's disturbing and really messed up. So yeah, Devil Man. And then uh, speaking of fucked up shit that's really disturbing, I ended it. Uh, I got the Berserk complete series as well. This is the um, 1997 TV series. There's also more than one version of Berserk. It was like another version that got made it or something like that see devil man lady was my childhood hell yeah dude that's what i'm saying like and, and you know what's funny is um i keep saying i'm gonna get all these movies and shows i used to watch when i was a little kid and i'm watching them and they're so messed up and i'm like i can't believe i was watching this when i was a kid <laughs> holy <laughs> shit like i was when you find out like that cartoon that you used to watch is being canceled and you're like what why and you watch it and you're like oh Oh, he's yeah. this is like five years old. <laughs> Apparently, my parents didn't give a fuck about what I was. Well, no, your parents I just... wouldn't have known because no, they didn't. Know. They don't know. You, you know. Correct. They had no idea what I was watching, and they were just like, "Oh, cartoons, whatever." Yeah, sure, have fun. Yeah. Um, little did they know. Not that they cared. My parents were always cool. 
they had other stuff to worry about. You know, I had a, a big family. I was like eight kids in my family. So the last thing they were worried about is whether what fucking cartoons we were watching. We were worried about who's in jail and who's fucking. <laughs> it's like, it's like they yeah, Simpsons <laughs> occasionally got banned in our household. It went through like yeah. when we were messing up and mm -hmm. like if dad could relate it to something that he's seen on the Simpsons, it was banned for a few months. And then it would come back and then something would happen. It would go away for a few months. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, when I was a kid, um, the, the fact that Bart Simpson used to say, eat my shorts was like a controversial thing. Yeah. Like, they, they were like, your children shouldn't watch that show because they'll learn to be rude or flippant or anything. And I'm like, wow, how the times have changed. <laughs> now you could be like, watch it. <laughs> you could watch Pornhub when you're eight. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, quite a different world we live in. If you had an eight-year-old today, it would be hard to not have them discover that accidentally. Like it's just so accessible. For no, you guys don't understand. When you go to the website, they ask you if you're eighteen. <laughs> so oh, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm eighteen. I mean, <laughs> so uh, freaking foolproof, guys. Foolproof plan. <laughs> um. Anyway, let's not talk about porn. Uh, I got <laughs> Fran, bro. Franbo. What'd you call me? I called you a Franbo. That's right. Um, from Super Rare. This is like a quirky artistic horror game. Um, I don't know. I just like horror games in general. This did not get a release on PlayStation. It only got released uh, on the Switch. And so therefore, I bought the version on the Switch from Super Rare. This is one of their titles that actually sold out incredibly fast. Um, they had a game, their latest title today, the uh, Nightmare, whatever the hell it's called. It sold out in like 20 minutes, 3,000 copies, which is pretty good for them. I super rare is killing it lately. Um, but what's weird is that that game that just got released today that sold out tomorrow, it's going up for pre order on limited run on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. They so super rare got the Switch version and limited run got the PlayStation version, which is weird. That's at the same time. Isn't that odd? Like I've seen it like yeah. I've seen like the Switch one come out and then like two years later the PlayStation one comes out on the or something, but I've never seen like a simultaneous release where Super Rare got the Switch version and Limited Run got the PlayStation version. So the publisher honestly must just be mm -hmm. like, I'll just take anyone printing my games at this point. Got an email from <laughs> Limited Run. We want to do a PS4 sure. version email from Super Rare. We want to do a Switch version. Yes, yeah, sweet. I'm well, what it tells tell me is that super, either Limited Run really wanted the PlayStation 4 version or Super Rare re is not interested in doing PlayStation games. I don't think they're going to do them much longer. They, You know how they've been doing them recently? I don't think they're selling that great, so I have a feeling they're going to just stick with Switch. That's just my feeling. Well, if you were a smaller company and you were facing financial losses and you had to pick, am I going to sell Switch games or PlayStation? You're obviously going to go. They sell mm -hmm. three to one of the PlayStation games. Right? Yeah, literally Switch is super popular to collect for. Mm -hmm. Nintendo collectors, I got to give it to you guys. You are the most passionate. You are the craziest. Congratulations. I, I agree one hundred percent. They are a different breed. Mm -hmm. But that's honestly, I, I, one of the reasons I enjoy play, PlayStation collecting a little bit better is that you know. I get games for like half the price sometimes as the Switch version. It's insane. You don't pay that Nintendo tax, baby. Oh, I yeah. wish I could enjoy Xbox collecting like that because it's even I cheaper. Know. It's true. <laughs> and then if you were collecting every limited run Xbox game, you could actually have a full set because it's reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, I've got um, Overdriven Evolution from VGNY Soft. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, that's this is the elite edition, um, and it has like a colored foil cover, so you can't really tell on this camera with this lighting. But like the text is like a super shiny foil, reflective foil, and in the back, this is like all reflective foil. It's like a special cover yeah. they came out with. Not a bad number, three forty six out of three thousand. But yeah, this I like is when a they number their games too. Like another thing limited run never done from day one they never numbered their games i don't understand how can you sell a low print of 2000 without numbering them and then what's cool is if you pre-ordered on like the first day uh you got a cool pin bro that's and it's i'm a nerd nice and they throw little bonus things in there too heck yeah so that's my little pin 
I like that stuff. And then I picked the Final Fantasy VIII. That's right. We uh, just talking about it. Yeah, just, I got it. Well, they, there's no, there isn't that. I don't think there's a ESRB version. I think it's only PAL. So I already own it on the Switch, but it was like it was like 19.99, and I just wanted it. Like I don't know. I've been playing through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I'm getting them like PlayStation Final Fantasy feels. I don't know how to describe it. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, playing Final Fantasy seven and eight and nine and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yeah, I just want to get this because I, I feel like at some point, someday I'd want this and uh, I'd regret not getting it. So I'm just picking it up now while it's cheap. It's only 19.99 on Amazon. If you guys want a copy. That's got an interesting cool. question that we just got asked. What's honestly mm-hmm. the worst console you could start a collection with? That's an interesting answer. In 2024, you could answer that with like mm-hmm. the Neo Geo or something. You could say like Sega CD or Sega Saturn or Dreamcast too. And they, these are all awesome systems, but the reason it would be terrible is the systems are just exploded in price. And if you want the cool games, it's like thousands of dollars. Like yeah. Neo Geo, you're looking at like forty thousand dollars for the coolest games on the system. Mm-hmm. Like that's a house. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it all depends on what what do you mean by worst? Like, if you just mean the most expensive, sure. But Neo Geo games are dope. So if you can afford it, that's a fucking sick thing to collect for. So I don't know. Like, you, like, you know, something. yeah, to me, it's like, you know, fucking the end gauge. It's cool. And it's cool to have it. But are you going to sit around and fucking play like Tony Hawk on your end, your phone or whatever? Like, I, get I, a respect, again I respect that answer. <laughs> commit commit it's just but again that's some people they're like i fucking love engage screw you so i mean whatever the worst you know whatever Whatever makes you happy collect it yeah yeah i think that's the main thing is collect what you enjoy collecting like i get into collecting for the sole purpose that it was cheap and i could buy lots of stuff and i could play that stuff but if i was 60 years old and i wanted to get into something then money mightn't be an issue and you might want to go back and buy that stuff you had as a kid. And then, you know, worst stuff for an older person might be the PS5 or the PS4 because they're not interested in the internet and all this other stuff. So definitely comes I'm, down to the person. I'm definitely interested to see what prices are of like when these PS4, PS5 stuff, when all of this is considered like old stuff, what those prices are going to be. Is it going to be just in the toilet or is it going to be like, you know, the price of a regular Xbox 360 game. Yeah, well, It'll... Xbox 360 games right now are going up in price. We're just talking yesterday, and this shocked me, that Formula One 2013 on the Xbox 360 sells for 500 to 800 US dollars because when it came out, it got a PAL version, it got a PS3 version, but the north american version got cancelled and then later on they made a low print run of the game of the year edition so apparently it's like the rarest xbox 360 game but you can buy it on the pal version for ten dollars or the ps3 version for ten dollars it's wild that like a game that you can own is like the most expensive game like that that it's absolutely wild to me that's it's it's a game that you would probably see out in the wild and you're just like Nah, don't need that. And that's I why I watched joke when I got of sent. videos. I'm like, this is a joke. I looked it up. I'm like, they're actually selling. And then we found an article like why it happens. And I mean, you know, it makes sense because full set collectors are the ones that are driving up the price. If there's 200 full set collectors and 100 copies of the game, well, guess what? They're going to drive the price up. And that's how it's how it works. So I got one more pickup. And this is a this was a this is a treat. I call these like a treat when I get something like these. Like I don't do it too often because these games are not too expensive, but they ain't cheap. Um, but uh, I got myself a, a, a Japanese PS One game, and I got myself a shmup. Oh baby! So I got B Donpachi. Ooh, um, bad. yeah. So the Donpachi series is like, there's like a bunch of these. So there's Donpachi, Dodonpachi, Dodonpachi, Reincarnation, Resurrection, all that shit. So there's, I, there's probably more of them. Die, DJO, whatever. I think that's, 
anyway, it's like it's a it's a shmup series uh, from Cave. Um, this is like the first one I think I'm in the series. I'm pretty sure. And um, these games are incredible, and uh, I just love them. And I'm gonna order Dodon Pachi next, the sequel. Um, Don Pachi and Dodon Pachi are like very, very, very similar. But Dodon Pachi is like a little bit like better version. It's like souped up. It's a little harder. There's more going on. This is like the simpler, like original one. But I like this version a lot. I think it's super fun to play. And um, you can play in Tate mode and it looks dope. And uh, yeah, Don Pachi. Very excited to have this. While we're talking about smups, Joe, you told me something really cool this week. The mm. Under Defeat HD and Mamaruken's Curse are getting remakes in the modern systems. Like mm -hmm. one of the most expensive PS3 games that is absolutely amazing. Mamaruken's Curse is going to be available to play for everyone. Like, how good is that? Yep. And yeah, it, uh, City Connections doing the release. Um, they're coming on the Switch, the PS5, and the Xbox. I think at least the PS5 and the Switch. I don't know about the PS4. But uh, what's cool, too, is I also think they said they're going to do Mamo's Curse, Curse 2, which I don't think has ever been released. That's so, cool. Well, I mean, not, it obviously has been released, but it's never been uh, westernized or released physically in the West. It's one of so the few smarts that I like. I loved and I played it and I even made a YouTube video about it. And it's, it's a really cool game, but it's it's like $400, so no one's going to play it these days. I I didn't buy it. And I like shmups. I, when I was collecting PS3, I was like looking through, and like I'm kind of mad because I think that game was a hundred and twenty dollars when I was looking at it first, and I was like, eh, I got other fish to fry. You know what I'm saying? Like I got other things to buy. I'll get it later. And now it's wicked expensive. And I'm like, you got me uh, curious on how much I spent for my copy now. I need to look it up. But uh, yeah, I think it. I'm, 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 I'm really hoping it gets a physical release, even if it's just a Japanese release. Fine, I don't care. Oh, I'll import it. You don't need English to play it at all. Like it's nope. a, it's a shmup, you know. So I love shmups. I paid fifty five dollars for my copy, Australian, so it's like forty US. <sighs> Not a bad deal, friend. But I bought it like twenty fifteen, when you know it was on clearance in Japan, and that was including shipping and different things like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's only like four or five shmups on the system, so yeah. And they're almost all being ported. It's like we're getting almost every Sega Saturn game, almost every 360 game, like almost every smup is coming to a modern system. It's so cool. But if you looked at it's like 2015, the smup genre was dead. Like it was literally dead. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it was, it was it was like a relic of the arcade age. Like I feel, and I feel like um. The arcades, like, the hist I don't know, arcade games and arcade game designs, like, they got left behind in the past, man. Like, once console game took over, people just, like, looked at that stuff like, huh? A score? The fuck? Who gives a shit? A score? Who gives a shit about a score? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that whole world of, like, like, making a game really hard and, like, you have to be amazing at it to beat it. Otherwise, you have to spend six dollars and quarters to beat it. Like, that, you know, that whole concept is gone so well, like i think with the soulsborne genres it's kind of made a resurgence of like being brutally oh, yeah. hard and mm -hmm. stuff like that so it's it's just evolved into which that. is why i think it's come back because yeah. i think yeah. people now i think there is a resurgence of of gamers who are like you know what actually i don't want this to be easy i want hard shit i want hard games i'm like, like Super Meat Boy and Celeste and all that type of genre come in as well. And yeah, Cele Celeste and... is so like the music in that game is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. Like you pair that with like the type of gameplay and like the brutally hard, like weird little like navigation puzzle techniques. And it's I, I don't get frustrated. I'm not just like I'm not I don't want to chuck my controller across. I'm like chilling and just. Like, I'll try this 150 more times and I'll be all right. That's such a weird thing to me that, like, chucking controllers. I, I never rage and I've never, like, broken my keyboard or thrown a controller. But people generally do that. I understand yeah. what what would go through someone's mind to want to, like, break one of these things. I would never do it now because they're so expensive. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but they do. They break their controllers. So. So that's one some, thing. Um, games to show off. Cool. 
No, I was going to say, like, I feel like uh, one thing gaming should teach you is how to be like a healthy loser, like how to not win. You should be able to learn how to do that in life without breaking your controller and acting like a freaking psychopath. And it's the people who like never learn that lesson that. Yeah, uh, know, I like, like to go they, in. They the grow game up to be like that in life, too. They just like can't if they don't go their way, they have meltdowns like I uh, like, I just I mean, gosh, dude, it's all right. When I play a competitive game of Geogus, for example, I go in with an attitude that there's two outcomes to this game. I either win or I learn. I don't lose, I learn. Yeah, and exactly. I research the things and I learn from that. And and you don't get down from that. There's only a positive experience. But you have to initially go in with that attitude and have that positive outlook towards the game. Otherwise, if you go in with I need to win and you lose, you're gonna get triggered and start to tilt and not have a good time. And plenty of yeah. people out there do that. And you can relate to any game. Playing um, like competitive magic is it has taught me how to just like take a breath chill relax just don't get super frustrated because you're just going to make a bunch of small mistakes that's just going to cost you the game yeah exactly and you could relate it to anything really you could even include it in team sports and anything <laughs> and i mean um, and if if you're playing for money i could see you getting upset if you lose but just if you're just playing and you know like just put playing like with your friends or something like you shouldn't really care like it's the experience of playing is the fun like me and my friends we used to we play board games and like you know i had a couple of people they get mad if they don't win i'm like who's a shit if we if you win it's just the <laughs> four of us sitting around like assholes you did who cares it's not like i respect you more if you won i still think you're a piece of shit you still think i'm a piece of shit Let's just move on. Without, like, who cares? It's I don't even ca I don't then care. Then Monopoly if I win. comes out and that friendship's all over. <laughs> I, I literally don't care about winning in games. I just care about fucking with my friends and having fun and laughing at them. I don't care about any. I don't care if I win. I just, I just, I'm just happy that you lose. Don't get me wrong. I love, I love <laughs> winning, but I like what I said before. I don't like losing, so I flip the losing on its head and turn it into a learning experience. Yeah, make something out of it. All right, guys, I've been showing off my PS1 collection now for almost three months, and today is the last lot of games. So we're at W, and we go into the double packs as well. So some cool stuff in here. Uh, first one, really nostalgic for me. I played this as a kid, and this is 007, The World Is Not Enough. I never owned an N64, so this was my golden eye back in the day. Uh, the music's still super nostalgic for me. And we got like an old home video of a birthday party and uh, we're like, I don't know, I would have been seven, eight or nine and we're all sitting around playing 007, The World Is Not Enough. <laughs> Such a good Fantastic game. game. Even the gambling in this game was like a poker game and a blackjack game all in, its, all in itself. It's so good. Oh, one of my favorites, absolute favorites, Worms on PlayStation 1. So the way we used to play this, I would get all my friends around, we'd have one controller, and we'd just pass the controller around, four players. Uh, I'd customize all the team names to like have all my friends' names as the teams. And it would keep all the stats. And oh, I was absolutely obsessed with Worms. Still holds up to today. Um, this is 2D Worms. I don't like the 3D that they've gone with. I prefer the 2D Worms. And, but even in some of the remasters, you can still play this version of the game, which is awesome. And it comes in the old double pack, which is pretty cool. A uh, Worms game I didn't play, but another one on the PS1 is Worms World Party. I didn't own this one as a kid, and I played it briefly as an adult. I didn't really like it. But I have to have it in the collection because it's Worms. Cool artwork, nevertheless. <laughs> Here we have SmackDown 2, Know Your Role. <laughs> yeah. Love the OG WWE games. So good. Especially when THQ did them. Yeah, those were classics. Two legends. Still still, still doing it. Triple H and The Rock. I, heard yeah, I think we have a game still... that seriously holds up, and I enjoy watching speed runs of this. And that is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. This is I just picked that up the other day. Nice. 
Hey, this holds like the world record for the longest ever speed run. It's like a 500 hour speed run or something. Because <laughs> it's RNG based. Oh. And you have to get every card and like, yeah, that it's, it's really cool. That literally All could right. drive and next we An RNG into... based speed run. Imagine being like about to win and just roll fucking snake eyes for 20 minutes. Like, fuck! <laughs> like, it would be like 50 hours yeah. of like struggling to get the last one. Yeah, All right, so okay. now we move on to something that you guys in North America mightn't have seen before, but power collectors will be familiar with these double packs. Uh, so we got these double packs in the power region. There's 21 of them, I believe. Those games were so good, dude. Five of them. Uh, so here we have Medal of Honor and Medal of Honor Underground. They come in these really cool white cases, white spines. That's cool. Those games are so good back in the day, man. This next copy I got for a Christmas present in the year 2000. This exact copy, still in fantastic condition because these, and even as a little kid, I looked after my games. And here we have Motor Racer 2 and Need for Speed Porsche 2000. The amount of hours me, my brother, and my dad put into these games was insane. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, this, especially the um, Need for Speed game. It was my first Need for Speed game. Still my favorite. Absolutely amazing. The whole game is just Porsche cars, but the progression through the game is just so good. Yeah, I'm surprised that um, racing games are for them. I mean, I'm sure there are some that are kind of pricey, but they're pretty affordable in general. And I feel like a lot of people do like them and have nostalgia for them so i'm surprised maybe they yeah, just they, maybe they mass produce. Big releases like both of those games i'm pretty <laughs> sure got platinum versions and mm-hmm. would have sold yeah. over a million copies and i know gran turismo is like one of the most popular games ever and shit yeah. so yeah I mean, that movie was fantastic by the way yeah is it good the new movie yeah yeah i haven't seen it yet i do very good it. highly recommend it next we have some tom clancy games we've got rainbow six and rogue spear I never played a Tom Clancy game until the PS3, so I couldn't tell you how these ones play. That's nice to have the double pack. Yeah, we've seen my Tomb Raider collection. I had most of them. However, we got a double pack as well. There's Tomb Raider 3 and Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. In double pack form. I, who is that on the cover? I don't. I can't recognize. I don't even. Who is that? Oh, that's the girl with the pixel boobs. You know. Is that is that Pack Girl? Who is that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, the case didn't break. It just came out. And for my most expensive, fuck! <laughs> oh, I will put this back together soon. <laughs> and here we have in two pieces the oh. 007 twin pack with the world is not enough and tomorrow never dies and the, um, the inlay popped out so I just have to work out how it goes back into the manual gotcha <laughs> yeah that concludes my entire PlayStation 1 collection so I hope you guys enjoyed that um, I don't know whether to show PS2, PS3, PS4 next. Maybe we do Switch games. Yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys want to see, and I'll show some more cool stuff over the next few months. I want to see all the games you have that start with the letter H. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why, am I, why am I full screen again? You want to see my shit again? <laughs> I feel like this is gonna break. <laughs> it's like a 25 year old case that doesn't want to go back together. <laughs> no, but that uh, stuff is that, later. that stuff is sketchy. But yeah, this is what I mean though. Like I this game from Japan, dude. Like it came, it's in perfect oh, condition. It comes in the nice plastic. The manual's nice and crispy. Even the you know, like how they have the little thing that goes over the spine. Like the dude took that off and like folded it all nice and put it inside the case, like so it's in there, like perfect, brand new, like the day you bought it. I'm like, this is, this is beautiful. Like chef's kiss. Yeah, dude. Mwah, seriously, it really is. Like I do that sort of thing. Like I even save like the little inserts on CDs and keep them and stuff like that from Japan. Like I um, I also collect CDs where like 
I haven't for a while, but I have a, a massive uh, metal collection. And I am um, a bunch of CDs. Hell yeah, dude. Fucking I love it. <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. Uh, it's my, my brother. He's the vinyl guy. My older brother. He has a like, vinyl down there. If you can see. Oh, it. yeah. Um, my older brother, he's got like 2000 vinyl or something like that. He's got a crazy collection. So like I, uh, you know, I'm just like, I'll just borrow yours for if I can. <laughs> so I just uh, I just but I have CDs and it's just because literally like back in the day, um, I was really into death metal. I used to just order tons of CDs out of catalogs. I used to get the relapse records uh, catalogs and stuff like that. And I would just order CDs out of that from all over the world. So I have a ton of really cool metal and i have like uh stuff from japan and they always had those cool little japanese uh things that come on the outside and i saved every one of them i pulled them off and folded them all nice and put them inside because i'm like i was always like that i'm like no he did it like i just <laughs> I, I, you gotta keep everything everything that comes with like like if it comes with like a sticker on the outside i cut the sticker out and I take the sticker and I put it inside the case and keep it like everything. Like I keep everything. I'm freaking a freak. I've done that for a few of my games that have had stickers on the outside, of, mm -hmm. like the seal, and the sticker's got a number of the low print of it. It's like, well, I want that. I'm gonna cut that out and put it inside the case. <laughs> <laughs> or I just won't open it because I'm like, I like the sticker. Well, when I was first collecting games, Joe, I had a principle that I was playing everything. I was opening all my limited run games, everything that I was buying, I was opening. And then I got to a point one day where I just couldn't play anything anymore. Like I couldn't keep up and I've been trying to catch up ever since. These days I keep my games. So LJ, what, what, uh, what, I mean, what, what do you primarily connect collect? Are you like into any specific systems? Are you just kind of a little bit of everything or. So I'm pretty much a little bit of everything. Like I'll, if I see something that I remember from my childhood or if I see something that looks interesting or even I get influenced by somebody on YouTube, I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, I used to just buy everything. Like I used to just snag stuff, just no rhyme or reason, just pick it up. If it's cheap, pick it up. If it, oh, we all start, I think. And then I just, I had to stop and I was like, let's, let's reevaluate. So I sold off a bunch of stuff. And like really sat down and was like, all right, how do I want to go and collect from here on out? So I'm a, I'm a big guy that I like to play the games. I like to check them out. I like to play new games that I haven't played. I missed out on a lot of games like of the big classics and stuff like that. So I like to visit those and play those. So I just kind of collect a little bit of everything. Plus I like to collect CDs. I collect movies that are on the other side of the room and little knickknacks and stuff just look like cards and stuff in the back and just a little bit of everything i'm uh, my tastes are, are broad it feels like a very personalized collection like it represents yeah like i can if you come down to the game room and you pick up a game i could probably tell you something about it or a memory with it or something like that like i like to collect that way just like these little things that even when I sit down and talk to Andy during the podcast, we'll be talking about something and it'll just unlock this memory. I'm like, oh my God, I remember the exact point I was at when I heard this album for the first time, or I played this game for the first time, or I've mm -hmm. got these Pokemon cards for the first time. Like it's, it's just, I, I love that part of like the collecting and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, it's like all connected. Like I, I have like super vivid memories of playing nightmare creatures on PS one and listening to Rammstein Sensuk that album. <laughs> I did that so much that like at this point, like if I hear that freaking Rammstein, I think of nightmare creatures. And if I exactly. play nightmare creatures, I think of Rammstein, you know what I'm saying? So like it yeah. is, so that's why I like it. Like you said, like it's like stuff from the past calls out to you almost and like you're like oh i don't know it's like i have to have this like i like I, if i'm going to play nightmare creatures now like i feel like i need to put on rammstein <laughs> like, so rammstein reminds me of riding on the school bus to school because that's when i used to listen to it have either yeah. of you ever heard of spin fighters do you know what spin fighters are mm, mm, i don't think so they are these little like they're kind of like okay, Beyblades. Like 
yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Where you put them in like a thing and you cr- like manually crank and you just like press it and then you put them in an arena and they clank together and they battle and stuff like that. I forgot about these things completely. Just wasn't even in my brain. I was scrolling marketplace and this guy was just like, hey, I'm selling spin fighters. I was like, oh, my God, spin fighters. <laughs> and I just was just like, how much? And he's like, $15. I was like, sold. I'll pick them up. Let's go. Let's nice. do it. Yeah, in Beyblades, I, I just recently sold a massive lot of Beyblades. on this little shelf. Have that little That's hit nice. of nostalgia when I want to. Yeah. Awesome. I'm like terrified. Like or toys. stuff. You know, stuff that we just had as a kid or collected yeah, even back in the day. Like a little tech deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, oh my god, there's some things I want so bad. But do you do you know what Mad Balls are? Do you remember what Mad yes. Balls are? Yeah, oh that rings a bell. Dude, they were like these little squishy, uh, like softball, baseball looking things, but they were like really creepy, goofy, artistic things, and they're just gross looking toys. And like I said, when I was a kid, I just I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I just like everything gross and stupid and fucked up and scary i like monsters i liked horror i like just twisted anything weird or gross i was into it and so like i don't know i see i saw like uh, i think it was one of retro x videos and he like somebody showed off like they had yeah, all i watched of, the th- i just saw the all of here. them for sale and i was like oh mad balls damn i want those so bad <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me as if i'm a fucking grown man all day googling like should I spend like eighty dollars on a little foam ball? <laughs> Absolutely. Damn. It. <laughs> but I'm. Hey, LJ, I wanted to ask. Um, where can everyone find you on social media? Uh, so we're at Dad's Game Room on Instagram. Uh, and Dad's Game Room on YouTube. We're we just started out. We're I think two two and a half months in. We're figuring ourselves out. We're trying to you know provide content that people like. So. That's that's where you'll find us the most. We might, you know, put ourselves on. We're, we are on Spotify, but I haven't been really keeping up because we haven't gotten gotten any hits there, really. So, YouTube and Instagram at Dad's Game Room is where you can find us. I definitely keep like uploading on Spotify. We've um we got like 140 episodes at this point, and it took a good 50 episodes until you started to get clicks on Spotify, and now every yeah. episode gets the same amount of views so obviously the people watching it on there are watching every episode and are enjoying it same with itunes because you can um i use a program called archer that automatically puts it on multiple streaming platforms so it puts it on itunes puts it on google Podcasts, puts it on apple podcasts and everywhere well, that's, that that's has nice I, I have to look into that for sure now do you do a show every uh, same time every week or yeah, so the way that I've done it, I've have you heard heard of Pixel Plus? I'm I'm sure you probably have the Pixel Game Squad guys. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of follow like their formula where they'll do a segment from their podcast and then another segment from their podcast, and then they'll release the full episode, uh, like after these little segments have released. So that's what I've been pretty much doing with with the new way we've been doing it. Is I'll put we've been going back and doing albums from 1990 and we're all the way up to 2010 right now but we've put it been putting that out as a segment we'll do like a topic that'll be another segment and then fridays is when the full episode comes out but that that might be subject to change i'm not quite sure yet we're still just trying to figure out what's best for us and our audience i mean it's a cool tactic one of my favorite podcasts at the moment does that and every time I watch the like one minute clip, I'm always like, I want to listen to the whole thing now. And you gotta wait <laughs> yeah. three days. I like, and I always watch the whole thing, so it works. The the problem with what the way that it's shaped up for us is like the album portion is like an hour long because we like we just get into these back and forths. We have stories. We both were musicians in bands. So like we trade stories and we'll go in depth on like something that the album associated with a memory and we just keep talking and talking and then we're like oh we're at an hour like we need to close this part out but then there's another segment that we have like a quick topic that's like just shy of 10 minutes and then another one that's 45 minutes so then i'm trying to figure out like i want to keep things a little bit shorter for the segments but the way that it's shaped up it just hasn't been that way so i'm trying not to think too hard about it and just 
keep putting the stuff that I want to put out and not really let it influence me too much. We do the same. Like sometimes the quiz goes for half an hour and then we've all got a massive stack of pickups and we look at the time and it's like two and a half hours or like today we're running smash through it all and different things like that. So it depends yeah. like, you know, it's, it's, you got to make all this extra content because it makes the show better. But yeah, that yeah. time thing comes into it. So. <laughs> yeah. What type of... Thanks so much for joining us, man. I think we might call that a night. That was a pleasure to have you on the show. And um, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Check that out was... LJ's podcast. Um, links will be in the description. Yeah, man, thanks for coming on. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. It, it was a lot of fun. I had a blast. All right, guys, join us on Saturday slash Sunday. We have hot dogs at Disney coming on the show. A guy who goes around Disney World and takes photos of hot dogs. And he's coming <laughs> on to talk about Disney games. So it should be a lot of fun. It'll be a little bit different type of episode, but it will be a lot of fun. <laughs> His Instagram page has got tons of followers, by the way. People love that. That's it. so and, and it's great. really cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I feel awesome. like now, if you're on social media now and you just find this like lightning in a bottle for some weird thing, people are just like, did you see this? And it just catches on. And it's just like, I have to follow it just out of principle. Have you seen the guy who collects Titanic VHS tapes? <laughs> okay, there's a guy out there who has a room, like, Full game room. He has two and a half thousand Titanic VHS tapes, and that's it. <laughs> and every video, he's like, "I have this many copies of Titanic on VHS," and all the viewers send him in more, and he keeps adding them to the wall. See, that's he's got all the collectors. Genius, because it like talk about engagement farming. There, like you have this, you get a crowd of people that want to be in on the fun. And they send these things that are a couple of bucks to this guy. And like he gets to show it off on his channel, which gives them their little like five seconds of fame or whatever. But it gives him content. It gives him content. And it's just uh, it's just an ever growing thing where he's just he's going to reach a point where he's like, OK, this is this has gone a little too far. <laughs> I have three storage units I'm renting out. I can't afford it anymore. Well, it's He'll... funny in the VHS collecting scene. Titanic used to be one of those tapes that was in every single thrift shop was in everywhere. Oh, yeah. You've seen it everywhere. And now the comments like the are, Fitboard. the comments are, well, you used to see Titanic everywhere, but that one guy's been buying them all. And now it's disappearing. <laughs> it's corner in the market. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing with Paulie Shore movies. So if anyone would like to send me Son in Law or Encino Man or Jury Duty, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work an expensive thing. And Figsy, but... <laughs> Figsy's doing Carrot Top. So if you have any Carrot Top uh, paraphernalia, anything from Carrot Top, you send it to Figsy. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work if you were doing like. I'm going to buy all the Pokemon Golds in the world. People just be angry. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if now Pokemon Gold took $100,000. I'm getting all the Kuons, guys, if anybody wants to send me one. <laughs> <laughs> but if you pick a really cheap game that no one likes, they'll get it on the joke with you. <laughs> yeah, that that's genius. It's so... It, it, as long as you get a following with it, like, it's... it's I would watch it. I would, I would be like, I, I have to just keep up with it because just... I need. I'm already inv invested. I don't. I got no interest in VHS collecting. I still like seeing this guy's posts every time he posts on there. <laughs> on that night, we'll call that a show, guys. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank Thanks. you. Later, guys. You found it.